All right, you guys. Um, on the interval, 0 to 6, closed, the particle is moving on the x-axis, so it's moving left to right. x of t is the function, not explicitly given. And the velocity of the particle given is here. Okay. Again, this is the position, but the velocity is given. The acceleration of the particle is given as blank, and there's a coordinate for the position. Do you see how it says x of 0? So that is a position point. At time 0, we're at 2. Velocity function, acceleration function. And the particle is moving left to right. Now, is, is the speed of the particle increasing or decreasing at this time? Give reasons. Now, you have to first understand that speed means absolute value of velocity. So if the speed is the absolute value of velocity, it's a little bit trickier. Okay, so what's going to happen is you have to think of speed as being that. That's going to be your speed. So when we look at this function right here, at 5.5, do you see if you plugged it in your calculator to this function, that would get your value if you had a calculator and crunch that. Then if you did acceleration, you'd get this. Now, when it's saying speed increasing, isn't it saying the derivative of this? Positive. If it's saying speed decreasing, isn't it saying the derivative of this is negative? So it's talking about the slopes, correct? When you say increasing, you're talking about the slopes of speed. The slopes of speed. So is the slope of speed up or down? Now, but when you have a velocity and your absolute value of it, do you understand when you're taking a graph that if you have a graph, if your velocity, say this is the axis, okay, and your graph looks like this, do you understand with the absolute value it flips it around like that? So, what's weird about that, and this is where it's trickier, is, so this is your velocity graph, it gets flipped. Isn't your slope of this graph from here to here negative? Mm -hmm. yes. From here to here it's positive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But watch this. Didn't it get flipped around here? Because of the absolute value. So let's think about this. If your velocity is negative, doesn't that mean your velocity values down here? <laughs> Didn't that get flipped over so everything's upside down in that interval? If this is your velocity graph, isn't this value negative, so it isn't getting flipped over, so every slope is upside down. Yep. So if your acceleration is negative, it will be the opposite of that, since it's upside down. Yeah. Got it? Your velocity graph is your red. It's the absolute value, so it flips it. This would have been, so your black now represents, it's the opposite. So since your acceleration was negative, it's now positive because this got flipped. It's in the negative area. So it, it is increasing because the velocity and the acceleration have the same sign. There's a little shortcut for that, that if they have the same sign, that it will be increasing. Now, if this right here was positive, are you okay that would just stay? Yeah. If this is positive, it would be decreasing. Okay. If this was positive and this was positive, would it be increasing as well? So do you see if the signs are the same, it's always positive, increasing? Sorry, it's always, the signs are the same, it's always increasing. If the signs are different, meaning if this was negative and this was positive, wouldn't it be the opposite of this? It's, it's kind of tricky. This is kind of annoying, and that's why they have this shortcut. Same sign or non-same sign. Decreasing or opposite signs? Um, decreasing would be signs are opposite. Increasing is signs are the same. All right, here, number two here, the average velocity of the particle on this interval. So average velocity, okay, is, if you look down here, there's your velocity function, and this is how you average it. You integrate it on the interval, and you divide by the interval. That's basic average. Now, real quick, what if it said average speed? 
There would be an absolute value around that velocity there. That's all. So you see the word average velocity. It's pretty simple. Use your calculator to crunch that number. All right, number, letter C. The total distance traveled of the particle from 0 to 6. Now, total distance means I'm going to x of t. Distance, I'm dealing with position. Okay, so you're going velocity to position. Now, if you integrate velocity, you have your change of movement. All right, when you integrate velocity, you have change of movement. So, technically... Isn't the integral velocity going to be, over the time, going to give you how much change you had? But the question is, why is there an absolute value around your velocity? Okay, you have to think about it. If you had a negative, see right here my graph? If you had a negative down here, and you're taking area, wouldn't that negative take away from your position? Wouldn't the area for this situation be positive? Then all of a sudden, this red part, wouldn't that be negative and then positive again? But when it, if I'm talking about position... Didn't I take negative away from it? So in the end, did I, I lose, these negatives takes away from my values and I lose position. I, 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 if this did not have an absolute value, that's your position change. But when you have an absolute value around it, around it, it takes all the negatives, flips them, and just adds up everything as positive because everything is a change, is a total distance. Even if you're going in the negative direction, it's a total distance in the negative direction. You're just moving in the wrong direction. It's still moving. So whenever you hear the word total distance traveled, you need absolute value because you have to flip the graph that was underneath over so you're not taking away areas. You don't want to take away any areas because even if you're going in the negative direction, you're still moving. So you need to add that, which would have been negative, instead of subtracting it. So you've got to watch out for that. D. On the interval, the particle changes direction exactly once. So that's given. Find the position of the particle at that time. So where does it change direction? To find out where a particle changes direction, you want to know where your velocity equals zero, and then you want to check to make sure it actually changes signs, your velocity changes signs. So if you look down here, to find out where it changes direction, you take your velocity equaling zero. You go to your velocity function right there. You set it equal to zero. Use your graphing calculator. Find out where that would be. You go down here. Okay, there it is. But lots of decimals for now. That, you need more because the interval, this is an intermediate value. So give me lots of decimals. Then you make sure you check either side. So either side would be like 5.5 and 5. You can't go beyond 6 because isn't the thing only go to 6? So you, gotta, you, could, you, have to try and, you have to find values on either side of 5 into velocity, and what they noticed is when they did that, they said it goes from positive to negative. All it has to do is change. All it has to do is change, so they didn't show the values plugged in, but you plug a value on either side of 5.19 into your velocity. Then, that proved it does change directions, okay? Then, um, actually it says you change directions, so actually, do you really have to prove it if it says you change directions already? If it changes exactly once, isn't this the only place it could? And it's said up here, you changed. So to some extent, you almost don't even have to say this. Okay. But the last one, how do you find the value? How do you find the position there? Well, you start with 2, because at time 0, your position is 2. And then to find position change, you integrate velocity over the interval 0 to b, which is this number. And that right there would give you your position there. Now, there is another way of doing it that I do want to point out, which some people like doing, some people don't. If you went to your velocity function right here, and I integrated that by hand, could you integrate that? Could you plug in the coordinate 0, 2, and find a particular solution? Could you integrate this? Kind of ugly, but you could. Could you plug in 0, 2? Could you get a particular solution, and then could I simply plug in this crazy number? And that would give me my position at that big number. That's another way, but I wouldn't do that, because I have a calculator available, and I don't want to dare take my time to integrate this when I can just use my calculator and do it this way. It's smarter to do it this way.